Hello, congressional leaders. Uh, my name is Bradley Schmidt. I am a healthcare entrepreneur in Southern California, and I was one of the respondents to your macro RFI. And I just want to take this opportunity to um, support my email submitted on October 31st with a video illustrating some of the impacts health policy plan and design is having on the local health community, um, particularly for the Medicare and Medicaid community. Now, in terms of managed care and, and health care, um, it's important to understand that over $4.1 trillion, or 20% of the GDP, is being spent on health care in the United States. Uh, in California, $83 billion is spent on health care. And what's interesting about managed care, it, it seems to be the purpose of managed care would be to control costs and also look at how to handle the quote-unquote super utilizers, the $96,000 per member per year spend. However, it doesn't, existing policy doesn't seem to be working as 137 million patients are um, still routing into the ER department annually, and there's just an amazing amount of healthcare um, deserts that are um, existing in the United States. So the key takeaway we're seeing in Los Angeles and, and also other parts that I've researched is that you know, as Medicare and Medicaid expand into a managed care, it's common for most people in the United States that are poor um, to have health insurance However, it doesn't seem that there is a lot of local healthcare access for them to receive their healthcare. So this is illustrated pretty easily in most metropolitan markets. And so I'm just looking at you know, one of the leaders in California where affluent healthy markets are saturated with healthcare providers, but the uh, Medicaid and Medicare senior Medicaid are actually being ignored for cost and risk reason. So clearly a flaw in managed care is contributing to disparity and equity in the United States. Now, in terms of policy, you have to understand on the provider side, we've experienced significant policy changes, which are really, quite frankly, bankrupting a lot of our infrastructure. Um, starting, you know, in 2007 with the Deficit Reduction Act, you know, going into the Bipartisan Budget Act, you know, it's really taking um, you know, our personal rates down. So someone like me that is operating in the United States, that's doing exams like this top right MRI, um, we used to only receive, we used to receive about $500 for this study, and now in 2016, we were getting $262, and in 2023, we're slated to get an additional 12% cut. So we've actually received cuts from $500 to under $200 going into 2023. Um, who is being harmed by this also is nearly 60 million Americans in the United States. So this is an LA Times article from June 23rd, 2023 commenting on a, a local family with insurance who had to receive $80,000 in medical bills, even though they had medical insurance. Also, health systems are struggling. Kaiser Permanente reported a $1.5 billion loss in Q3. Um, Kaiser uh, Providence Healthcare reported a similar number. Um, so the health systems are struggling, patients are struggling, and so are safety net hospitals. In the past 45 days, seven healthcare um, hospitals in Dallas, Los Angeles County, Atlanta, um, Northern California, all filed bankruptcy that were serving the poor and safety net communities. And this particular hospital on the slide, which is called Atlanta Medical Center, which is owned by Wellstar, was closed permanently on November 1st, 2022. So the other big loser in today's healthcare is really physicians. Um, you know, really two ways. You know, one, um, on the rate, which we sort of described, you know, they're receiving less money. Second is actually their morale impact. You know, the, the gaming of the system that's being performed by, you know, federal programs um, is really triggering a, a, a morale um, decline so severe it's actually harming the healthcare infrastructure. So this NAMD study is commenting that of a survey of 12,000 uh, physicians, only 6% describe their, their, their profession as being positive. So 94% of these, patients, these physicians describe their career choice as um, negative. Um, and in fact, there was a quote here that says, there are so many other ways I could have made my living and been more fulfilled. The sad part is we chose medicine because we thought it was worthwhile and noble. For what I have seen in my short career, it's a charade. So who's winning in today's healthcare? Providers are losing, patients are losing, and quite frankly, health systems are losing. Who's winning in healthcare? And clearly the big winners are big insurance. So the Medicare and CMS programs are really fueling their growth. Uh, Humana at the time of the Affordable Care Act, for example, was a, about a $40 stock. It's now $550 per share. Um, good for shareholders, bad for the community. 
Um, in United Healthcare, the leader in the United States for insurance is, has basically had a $9 billion profit over the last six months. Uh, how are these insurances able to generate such profits? Um, so if you think about plan design, the key trigger for these uh, exorbitant growth is actually a federal program around Medicare stars and a, a term called auto enrollment. Uh, Medicare has a program where they're stars, you know, one star, two star, three star, four star, five star. Um, and what these stars do is they look at about 200 million Americans under this program called NCQA or, and also a subprogram called HEDIS. It's a healthcare effectiveness um, data information set, HEDIS. And the HEDIS offers 42 quality measures, um, kind of like a report card for schools. You know, um, it might be um, cancer screening, it might be vaccines, uh, it might be diabetes or hypertension. Um, but these, the idea of these programs is to actually help solve, uh, preemptively solve healthcare. Um, but what it actually is doing is the big insurances have actually figured out a way to game the system where each Medicare STARS member is now auto-enrolled into a STARS program with a revenue number of $14,000 per member per year on average. So if you multiply 14,400 per person in the United States times $200 million, 200 million people, that re represents a significant amount of revenue um, for modern insurance. The other big winners in today's healthcare are companies that McKenzie described as health administration companies. Um, an MIT talk I, I was at, um, they said this is the number one reason why the U.S. healthcare is actually more expensive. It's just the medical management um, cost um, of doing business. So what is the solution? Um, for me, the number one solution in the United States, you know, cause, and perfectly causing the most harm, I believe is actually a patient protection law, HIPAA. Um, how I found out about this was actually for my friend's uh, MRI exam he had at a local academic center which was being paid at 961% higher payment than Medicare. So in his case, it was a $2,777 paid rate from insurance to the health system, and he received a $200 copay. Um, and Medicare actually received this. So when I heard about this, I called the insurance plan, and I said, hey, why is it that you know, you're paying a health system 961% more than an imaging center like myself and the contracting person said, hey, we cannot comment on this because of HIPAA laws. So it got me thinking, you know, what is the impact HIPAA is playing in terms of harming communication? And if you think about any sort of, um, you know, modernization of healthcare, I guarantee you, you know, the HIPAA law will be invoked in terms of halting any sort of discussion around modernization. The second big contributing factor to disparity and equity and perfectly bankruptcy in the United States is the actual ONC High Tech Committee. So the members of this committee are significant organizations um, like software companies like Epic, Oracle Cerner, or, or, or health systems like ACA. So generally speaking, the plan design around the United States healthcare infrastructure from a technological perspective is being halted in terms of progressive um, interoperability efforts or image sharing efforts to include, you know, there's. 700 different electronic medical record uh, vendors out there. So I think reforming high tech and adding a medi medi voice, you know, to the committee would be very valuable in terms of taking some of the perspective into the community to it. A third contributor to, for disparity in the United States is also a state law. So there, in California, um, there's a law called the Knox Keene, which is a Department of Managed Care law for, for Southern California and Northern California. And what the Knox Keene does is it establishes a framework for uh, establishing um, adequate managed care. And in LA County or uh, large counties, it says 15 miles for adequate care, 15 miles or 30 minutes. The reality is, is that once a patient's in managed care, the health plans, the insurances, frequently um, capitate the patient or narrow network them to facilities that are far away. So I'm very close with the Martin Luther King area physicians and hospitals, and it's very common for their patients who live in Compton and uh, want to participate in the local hospital are actually rerouted to facilities, you know, 12, 13, 15 miles away um, for advanced care. For advanced care, and advanced care could equal a basic X-ray or it could equal um, surgery or screening. So I think looking at each state's department of managed care laws could actually um, increase um, disparity and equity. And also, if you lowered the mileage thresholds and drive time thresholds, 
I think you can really improve outcomes. The other final piece I think would look in terms of modernizing would be to understand the role con Congress and CMS is having in terms of provider discrimination. So if you think about the 6% morale rate, you know, the kind of the crippling of the infrastructure of the U.S., you know, CMS and Congress are pr playing a part by harming the people who are providing the care the most. So in my industry, the IDTS, Independent Diagnostic Testing Facility, we've experienced a 63% cut in payments since 2006. Uh, cardiology had a 24% cut over that same period. Pathology was 27. Radiation oncology was 30. Um, simultaneously, uh, Medicare and CMS discriminate against place of service. So if you think about medi medi markets, frequently there aren't any health systems in these markets, and yet Medicare and CMS discriminate by place of service, where a, a health system might receive 60% higher premiums than someone like myself um, in an independent market. So the, ultimately, I think the um, the only practical solution for for plan design in terms of a modern care would be to think about something that Bernie Sanders has been advocating, which is more of a Medicare for all plan. It seems to make sense if one trillion dollars is being wasted on medical insurance administration and 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 health systems and health insurance. You know, health insurance is really harming health systems and health providers like myself. It seems to be if you can cut out the health administration fees, you can really solve healthcare um, from a population health perspective. Perhaps through an auto enrollment um, salary program, perhaps offering primary care salary um, as, as opposed to fee for service, in terms of basically controlling the overall spend. And then someone like myself, who would be a, a specialty provider, maybe do a hybrid model where specialty providers would be a fee for service. So salary for primary care, family medicine, um, you know, fee for service for specialty care, it seems to make the most sense. Um, now, wrapping up here, just con consider me a resource uh, for change. Uh, I've spoken to um, several leaders within Congress. I've also spoke to several leaders within CMS. I responded to the CMS RFI um, in uh, August and spoke to several of the leadership within CMS in March, in June. Um, and I'm constantly emailing and calling to advocate for this uh, modernization of healthcare. But consider me a resource. Again, my, this is Bradley Schitt Smith. My email is bradley at inglewoodimaging.com, bradley at inglewoodimaging.com. Uh, Thank you.